Hello and welcome to the Odds Checker Betting Show. I'm your host, George Ellick, and this is a special show as we go through Andy Holdings' five horses to follow and a couple more extra ahead of the flat season. I say ahead of the flat season, Andy, but the flat season has already started in earnest. How have you found the first few weeks of it? Great viewing. Um, not that many bets, just a uh, bit, bit of a bystander, really. Uh, chewed the fat, and I think this is probably a good time to do this uh, preview uh, as 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 well as any because we've seen most of the tra- uh, trials haven't we mm. you know the, the greenham um the um the craven meeting was, was a good one and, and of course the uh the phillies trial as well at uh, newbury yesterday have all given us some decent clues into how these races might shape up in a few more weeks time and then if we throw in the uh ballydore battalions um who <laughs> Haven't necessarily come over in full force yet. He did run a couple of foot soldiers, didn't he, at the Craven meeting just to test the water, as he often does. Uh, and uh, one ruler into the mix as well from from the Godolphin stable. And I think we're going to get a, a genuinely uh, high class guineas this season. I think we're looking at five to one the field at the moment. We haven't mm. got any outstanding, uh, um, um, an obvious um, uh, participants at the moment but we, we've got a good collective of, of, of th- three-year-olds this season so yeah I'm looking forward to seeing how they develop through that the course of the season. You know we're just coming off the back of a Cheltenham festival and an Aintree festival where the Irish were dominant we're into the flat season now and not to give any too many spoilers away but Andy four of your five headline horses to follow trained by one certain Irish trainer so we'll get onto that in a second but when when you went through your horses to follow and so there are five headlines then we're going to touch on five others that are that kind of were on the short list but didn't make the final cut what were you looking for here i mean th- this is you know these are the horses that you're anticipating will be you know right towards the top end of the of the top races uh, in this flat season my main criteria george was, was trying to pinpoint horses i think are going to be group one horses by the end of the year um if not already at the moment um Horses that are going to be running well in the early part of the season, i.e. classics. Um, and there's one in particular who's not quite there yet, but I think probably will be um, in a very short space of time, vying for um, uh, races such as the Derby and maybe Royal Ascot um, um, riches. So, yeah, it, it's a difficult juggle in that, really. There's a couple I could have put onto the list, which I'll I'll throw in there anyway mm. as, as horses to keep an eye on. But... I, I, they're more under the radar, if you like. Um, but yeah, th- these main five, uh, I think, are going to be um, money spinners for that throughout the season. I can't see them not being competitive in, in, the, in, the, in the very best races. Great stuff. Well, before we get on to your first of the five horses to follow for the flat season, just going to point the listener or the viewer in the direction of the Odds Checker app. It is where, of course, you can get Andy's tips every morning ahead of the racing first. Also, the best prices the best bookie offers free bets place terms and everything else there and loads of the best tipsters in the game including andy across all sports as well so do download the odds checker app now into the first of your picks and it's the favorite for the derby it is high definition seven or two for the derby as it stands at the moment at bet 365 for um for o'brien's yard there and two starts both coming towards well towards the end of the season last year at the curra um, both over a mile and two wins as well for high definition. We don't necessarily know where. I mean, I, I think we know that he'll be going to one of the uh, Derby trials, but we're not sure exactly where at the moment. But where do you expect him to pitch up? And what is it about high definition that makes you so excited for the season? Um, j- just the, the the making shape of him, really, to be honest. Um, first time up, he was sent off 7-1. to one. I think he was third or fourth favourite to win a Cura, uh, Cura Maiden. Uh, I think yeah. it was, I think it was Wordsworth, his, his stab companion, who was sent off favourite that day. And for nine tenths of the journey, Wordsworth looked as though he was going to justify his position as favourite. And then along came high definition from a very uncompromising position at halfway to pick his pocket late on. He won, he won by three quarters of a length, but he did it in such a cosy fashion that I thought, wow, he he must be something special to pick up the way he did in that short space of time. Um, to overhaul his mark, uh, his, his stable mate was was uh, was um, a victory of some quality, and and the time figure was pretty good. It, it wasn't off the scale, but it was certainly up there with what I would could say, what I would say, an above average maiden time figure. Um, 
and and they made sort of no um, secret of, of of running him in a in a in a really good high class race next time out. They they, they went down the, the Berriesford route, um, which was on the on the round track. It's a tricky one that new course that at um, uh, at the Curra because as we know, if you get into a poor track position there, it, it's quite difficult to come from way off the speed. And he was drawn thirteen of thirteen, so straight away, Jamie Heffernan had to drop him in and give him some kind of chance to get a run through. With, and by halfway, he was a long, long way behind. I mean, three furlongs down, he was still seven or eight lengths off the speed. And he was up against good horses like Monosibs, uh, Snap Raytera, Salukan, his Stabber Companion, uh, horses who got form in top quality races. And again, he gunned them down late on with an sh- amazing turn of foot. Not a turn of foot where you would see his legs going two to everyone's one. Just that relentless, grinding, mm. powerful charge that he's got. Obviously, he's got a huge, big physique. Uh, I think he's very deceptive horse the way he covers the ground. And in the end, once again, he won very, very snugly. Um, a mile is very much the bottom end of his spectrum with regards stamina. He's definitely going to get a mile and a half, no problem. Um, you know, he's he's, he's uh, by Galileo and, he, and his dam had plenty of uh, stamina in her side as well. So I think he's the right Derby favourite. We'll probably see him in a trial within the next few weeks. Which one it'll be, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the Dante. That looks the obvious calling card for me. Um, you know the the the, the ballet sax has already been won by one of his bullshit ballet, so that that route's mm. been blocked off. Um, I wonder thought he'd go to Lingfield, um, and not necessarily sure that um, he'll go to Chester because that that trap might be a bit too sharp for such a big horse like him. So so I would say the Dante would probably be his route. Uh, he'll probably win that, and whatever price he is now at the moment for the Derby, he'll be he'll be a short price favourite for the day, I'd imagine. It still retains an entry for the Guineas, but very unlikely to go. You know, twenty to one around the place yeah, at the moment, but, but over eighty enough. odd, hundred odd for on the exchange, so won't be running there. Um, I mean, let's look at that that seven or two price. I mean, you say he'll be shorter on the day. He's as short as five to two elsewhere with Hills. Is it? Are there not too many unknowns at this stage to be getting stuck into a seven or two shot for the Derby? Given you know, you, you mentioned all the other Derby Derby trials there. We don't know what's going to happen in the Guineas. There are so many horses that look pretty. You know, that are just unknown quantities in terms of, of what they could do or do you think you know would you right now say hand on heart you you can be pretty confident that that seven or two will be shorter on the day oh yeah i mean i, I can't see him not winning his derby trial it, he'd be a very very short price forward i'd imagine to win the dante um obviously you know you've got the likes of gosden and, and stan varian etc like to live that pitch there hat into the ring with with their individuals. Um, we'll get a, a chance to have a look at a few more, of course, at Sandown this weekend. We've got some good derby trials uh, along the way. Um, there's, a, there's a good one. There's a good two, really, if you, if you throw in the, the handicap at um, at uh, Sandown. You've got Trawler Man who runs, I think, in, in he's down to running the handicap. He's also entered up in, in the derby trial. You've got the derby trial at, at uh, Epsom tomorrow, as we speak. There's a good mm-hmm. one there. Um, Uncle Bryn runs in that for the Gosden Stable. I know George Scott quite likes Too Friendly. Uh, he's in that as well. But at this very moment in stage, that they wouldn't be up there with uh, you know, a, a highly promising individual like High Definition who's already proven at gr- Group 2 standard as a two-year-old and has the scope for to do even better as a three-year-old. So I, I think he'll be... He could be, it, it easily be six to four uh, know, come, come the day, or even, you know, I wouldn't say be odds on because we don't know the full field. But if you're trying to predict where whereabouts we're likely to be with a horse like that, if it goes according to plan, and the way that Aiden I brain three year olds have started the season as well, that's another yeah. point to make. None of them are backward or needing a run or likely to do something in a negative fashion. All of them have hit the ground running, they've all won their trials. A lot of their maiden horses are winning, like Wordsworth, Bullshaw Ballet. Um, Sil Amarok, they're all win- winning the right races and winning them well. So they're all, as a collective unit, ahead of schedule, which they're not normally are. They normally need a run and then they come on for it. So I can say I'd imagine high definition will be tuned up to win his race first time out and then go straight to the derby. We're going to be talking about a fair few Aidan O'Brien horses, but just wanted to ask you about Wordsworth then, because you know he beat Wordsworth on debut, who um, you know was the supported one on the day um, for the for the same connections. You might think that maybe the the shorter than ideal trip for high definition might be the cause for that, but Wordsworth did come out and step up to a mile two uh, back in April and, and won pretty cosily there as well. Surely that form 
you know, could stand Wordsworth in good stead for uh, for some of the big races this this summer. Yeah, definitely, George. Yeah, he's a horse I like. Um, obviously, he was well fancied on his debut. Hence, he was five to two favourite to beat high definition. Wasn't good enough on the day. Uh, Graham might have been a bit too soft for him. No, who knows? But he, he was good the other day at the Curra. Again, he was well fancied to win a big field maiden. And he got the job done in, I thought, professional man- manner. It wasn't a wow performance. Mm. His time was, again, good without being off the, off the charts. Uh, I just liked his attitude. He, he's a kind of get down and dirty horse that will really, you know, um, dig deep for you in the trenches. I see him more as a Irish Derby horse. Yeah, it's, I think it's quite significant that he's run at the Curragh twice, so he's got acclimatised with this track. Um, he might go to the Derby, who knows? But um, and do a Serpentine, as it were, because I think Serpentine won that very same mm. maiden before he went on to um, to win in the Derby. So if if he goes to the Derby like a, a thirty-three to one shot, I think I think you probably want a fiver on him just in case. Um, but so yeah. He he might just go. He might just sidestep uh, Epsom completely because quite a heavy top tours. If you see him hit the ground, he's quite a big big barrel unit. Um, so not necessarily coming down the hill at Epsom would would be ideal for him. I wouldn't have thought on fast ground, but um, yeah, another horse that I think Aiden's going to do really well with throughout the course of the season. Well, another one that Aiden's got uh, entries for the classics coming up, but in the one thousand guineas and the Oaks is Willow, Willow the, who uh, yeah. I, I, not going to say disappointed, but first couple of runs last summer finished fourth of the Curra, then third uh, at Leopardstown, failing to justify a five to four favourite tag for that maiden. Then went on to Leopardstown and put in a good performance, winning at three to one, uh, beating uh, Umniat there. Uh, Willow is your second selection uh, in your five to follow, Andy. Uh, talk us through her. Yeah, similar to you, George. I was a bit underwhelmed by our first two performances. Um, it wouldn't have necessarily got you too excited going into that uh, Leopardstown maiden towards the back end. Things it was in mid October, mm. um, but it was the first time that she really came of age. I think she just needed the first two experiences more than normal uh, one, for one of Aidens. Normally they usually have the one and then they come on for the second. That didn't materialise. But I love the way she opened up on the final start when she beat Omni and, and Flirting Bridge. A form you could pick holes in it. Omni Art got beat at Dundalk the other day and a weather made all beat by a nice horse of uh, A Dam Guinnesses called Mar. Um, mm. But the third horse has won Floating Bridge for Henry de Bromer. That went to uh, Dundalk during the winter and absolutely bolted up from a wide draw. So, like I say, depending on how you read the form, um, is depending on, on, your, on your, your take on it. But it was just a performance of Willow herself. She glided across the ground. She got to the front very easily. She went clear within a few bounds. And I just like her as a specimen. She's tall, she's rangy, she's got a lovely physique. Um, and I, again, I, I just see her as an, a massive improver this season. I think what we saw last year was just a, the, the, the sort of tip of the iceberg. I'm trying to pick horses, who I think, like I said, will keep improving and we, we've only just scratched the surface with them. Um, and I very much see her as an Oaks horse. I, I, I don't see her as a... She, she just wouldn't have the pace to win over a mile as, as a three-year-old against the genuine quick horses. Uh, who were going up from seven furlongs and got that integral speed. But that was the first time I thought she got a real stamina test. It was on the soft side, and it was a probably genuinely run mile, and the time figures backed that up. So I think, um, again, similar to high definition, she's going to be winning an Oaks trial and putting her claims on, on the on the table for Epsom very, very soon. And I see Hodges for her around about 20 to 1, or 16, 20 to 1 16, for the, for the yeah. Oaks. Yeah, I, I think that's massive, because Aiden will have probably one or two bullets to for big bullets to fire and in, obviously Santa Barbara's favorite but I, I think I, I see Willow's more definite mile and a half off so what I, I see Santa Barbara is a genuine miler she apparently shown the kind of speed at home that is getting everyone very excited at Ballydore that's why she's favorite for the for the guineas and mm-hmm. I think she'll, she'll probably go down the coronation route I don't really see her as being an Oaks filly at this stage uh, whereas I, I say I think Willow's a mile and a half force all over Really interesting that because, as you say, Santa Barbara nine to two, uh, best price with Skybet favourite for the Oaks, but as short as three to one in places. But if you don't think Andy that Santa Barbara is going to be even turning up at the race, and suddenly Willow, who is in amongst a clutch of horses at sixteen to one, uh, best price, then you've got to think that will shorten markedly, especially when you consider that they are stable mates, stable companions, and Willow could be. You know the the key bullet for uh, for Aidan O'Brien to fire um, for the Oaks, and we're going to stick with the Oaks as well. Um, Willow is sixteen to one alongside Pretty Gorgeous Indigo Girl, 
Tayona and one other horse who you are putting up as your third selection here who ran yesterday you know we're recording this at 25 past 12 on uh, on Monday the 19th of April yesterday in at Newbury Snow Lantern for Richard Hannon won very very classily indeed uh, under Shawnee Levy and Snow Lantern is your third selection here yeah, I, I gave this one some thought. Um, th- this one's parachuted in at the last minute because obviously we, we set to do this last week and mm. I, I was compiling my list as, as it went on. And I didn't have her in the list, but I, I've, I've crowbarred her in and I'm going to talk about the one I've dropped out, like in the, perhaps the, in, the, <laughs> in, the, in the any other business towards the back end. But yeah, um, yeah I, I, I really, really liked her yesterday. Um, we got some lovely side on shots as well of the, of the scout camera, didn't we, at Newbury yesterday? And mm. you could see them at their full pace. And she was right at the at the head of affairs early on and they were going a real good speed. You could see, you could sense the pace they were going, um, you know, with that camera close up. And I, I thought, God, this is really going to test these front runners here because there's several in behind that are going well, who are having better run through, uh, like D-Rab and Fantastic Fox, who were getting the trail. And she quickened off the front. And the further the race went, the better she looked. Only takes a very, very high class horse to do that. When they're up with the speed, they've got horses either side of them and then they go again. And then other horses come at them and then they pick up again. Mm. Her closing sectionals from four out, which I did in comparison with all the other horses on the card, like Alazi, Chindit, Nugget, um, and in particular Alcohol Free, she did the same split times as those already proven high class horses. So although she won a maiden, her overall time and her sectionals were in keeping with those kind of group horses. Um, so straight away, I'm thinking this is definitely a pattern horse. How high, I don't know. Whether she's a 1,000 guineas horse, only time will tell. I'd certainly have her in that bracket at the moment. I see she's 8-1 to one for the for the 1,000 guineas, which if she does run, I think will be decent each way value. Um, I'd certainly fancy her more than alcohol-free, or we'll get on to in a minute in my supplementary, uh, supplementary mm. um, horses to talk about later on. Um, but I think, I think with her, a mile is the minimum of a, of a stamina spectrum, and I think a mile and a quarter, even mile and a half might might be the key to her later on. But she'll definitely get a well-run mile, which I think one or two, like Sacred and like Alcohol Fee, might not necessarily um, achieve. Interesting uh, race that yesterday. And often I wonder, Andy, given, you know, Snow Lantern had that experience where she ran very well at Ascot just behind Sabil Queen, who hasn't really done much to frank the form, it must be said. But both Darab and Fantastic Fox having their first run yesterday at Newbury, both well supported in the market as well. Given, you know, your admiration for what Snow Lantern did yesterday and the times, would you be looking to, to kind of follow that form line through into other races or are you happy just to take Snow Lantern out of the race? Uh, yeah, I, you know, there's p- positives to be taken from the second and the third, as you say, that, you know, they didn't probably have as much experience as the winner. Um, certainly think Day Rab was tenderly handled when mm. uh, the winning chance was, was gone. Because um, I, 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 I don't think the winner was actually fully extended. I, it was very much a hands and heels ride by Shane Lee, yeah. Sean Levy, as I could see. Um, because I, she did what she had to do to get the job done yesterday, but I think there's going to be masses of improvement from that run to the next. I think... Once they caught the Hannons unawares, I, I, I think they've always had her in high regard, but they weren't necessarily thinking along the 1,000 guineas line. Um, but now I think they're probably going to have to seriously consider it. Um, so, yeah, again, another one I've chosen that could easily go 1,000 guineas route, could be an Oaks filly, who knows, but definitely going to be running in those kind of group one races late, late, later on down the year. Races such as the Coronation Stakes at Ascot. Hannon loves the real meeting. Um, so, yeah, he, she she's she got me really excited. She was the one big wow horse that I took out of that meeting, you know, and it was a good meeting as well. That You know, he had a good collective of horses to guide you with regards to time figures, uh, you know, Chindit, Nugget, al uh, and, mm. and Alcohol Free. And she was the one out of all those horses that I thought, yeah, I, I'd be with her all season long. I reckon she's going to be fairly popular as well. The Best of the British by Frankel and Sky Lantern too. So I'm sure there'll be plenty rooting for her throughout the summer, including myself and you, Andy, after this. Uh, number four on your list, it's the word that I've been singing to myself ever since Sam Long scored twice for Oxford on Saturday afternoon to push Oxford into the playoff places. It is Wembley, uh, another one for Aidan 
uh, and yeah, another one who's who's one of the market, um, you know, towards the top end of the market in both the 2000 guineas and the derby. Uh, for the 2000 at the moment, Wembley is is seven to one, and for the derby, you're looking at a bit of sixteen to one. Uh, and you know, w- Wembley been beaten, you know, only won one of his uh, of his six starts so far, but hit the frame in all six of them and won you on a side with this season. Absolutely, George. Yeah, I, I must admit. It's, take, it's taken a while for me to sort of um, be, a, be a lover of this horse because he got beaten at odds on on, on two occasions mm. um, and he, he was a massive odds on shot to win at Roscommon. I thought, God, I wouldn't want to be taking two on about him having seen him previously to that. I thought he was a bit of an iffy character. But um, he changed my opinion of him around um, in, a, in a massive fa- fashion when he won that day at Roscommon. And then, lo and behold, they, they ran him in the, in the, in the group one at... Um, the national stakes at the course—that was a bold move. Mm. He went off twenty-two to one, and although he got beat that day, he fully justified his his position or his um, representation in that race. And if you go back and watch that race again, he was by far and away the best horse in the race for me. Albeit Thunder Moon won it and probably you know won it quite well on the day. I thought Wembley was hugely unlucky. The track position was poor. Wayne Lorden got him towards the back of the field. He. he he had to switch round horses and come wide. Yeah, I know Thunder Moon had a bit of interference as well, but Wembley was running him down big time late on. And he confirmed that impression that he created on me that day with his run in the Dewhurst. And I think the Dewhurst form is the best we've seen last season. I think the winner of the mm. Guineas will come out of the Dewhurst. We saw Chinned it, Frank the form with his win yesterday in the Green. And he finished ninth. He got absolutely battered in the Dewhurst. But if you go back and watch that, look how far Wembley was behind and where he was on the track. Massive stand side bias towards, uh, you know, at, at that time of year towards the near side at, at, at Newmarket when the when the grounds, um, particularly when it was soft, and Wembley was because he was drawn two, he had to race right out on the wing. He got no cover. He's covered the most ground and he's made the ground up to only get beat three quarters of a length by his stable companion Marks Basilica on the worst part of the track. Hmm. I massively upgraded his run. I thought. Um, he was by far and away, similar to the National Stakes, run the best horse in the race. If he gets a good draw in the Guineas, I, I think he's almost certain to be there or thereabouts. I've got a huge amount of time from St. Mark's Basilica. I think he's a similar to uh, Wembley, a an out and out miler. Um, you know, you're looking at St. James's Palace Stakes, his races down the line, Sussex Stakes, is all those good mile races for these three year olds. Um, I mean, Aidan Abrams has got a frighteningly good squad this season with the three year olds of all. Of, through all the um, you know distant spectrums, um, but I think these two is chief too, and that you know they 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 you know give a right good beat into Thunder Moon, who was a good winner in the national stakes. You know some good horses in that race. That day, Al Bashir, Cadillac. Mm. Um, you know we've seen Chindit win. It, it, it's a race that's already begun to you know work out well. Al Commit Al Kamate was in it. Um, yeah, it didn't get any better than that, and and you know these two are above well you know well above average. Um, and yeah, Wembley's the pick for me out of that, out of that out of that pile. Are you surprised that we haven't seen them over further than seven at this stage? Uh, no, because Aiden tends to do that. He, you know, the Jewers, uh, you know, he's predominantly the, the the best race for for the Colts. Um, yeah, you know, they're, they're both bred in the purple. Of the, I think they're both by Galileo, so yeah. I think they are going to stay a mile uh, quite quite comfortably. Um, and I don't mind them going there straight to the Guineas. I mean, Aiden actually. He's got a be- better record with his horses fresh going into the Guineas first mm. time than he has with them having a trial. I think if you go back through the years, you know, and look at all the, his role of honour, I think virtually all of them go there without a run. So that wouldn't bother me either. Um, you know, they're both run well on their season or re- on their debuts as a two-year-old. So that's not a problem either. Um, but yeah, he, he'd be my uh, thousand Guineas pick at the moment. Wembley has managed to turn you over the course of the last year or so. Um, on then, actually, before we before we go on to your final pick, uh, we've just got a giveaway for all of the people watching on YouTube. So if you're listening to this as a podcast and you want to enter the giveaway, then do get over onto the Odds Checker YouTube channel and you can uh, and you can enter there. Because our friends at Timeform have given us three copies of their Flat Horses to Follow book for the 2021 flat season. The book includes 50 to follow in the UK and a selection based in Ireland. There's also anti-post tips, uh, rising stars and profile, trainer talk, top horses lists, stats, and so much more. 
if you want one, just comment on the YouTube video and we'll select three lucky winners totally at random. So best of luck. I definitely recommend anybody, as I'm sure you do, Andy, anybody who's watching this with an interest who wants to pick out a couple of horses uh, themselves and, and want to follow the flat racing, the flat season as it goes, that the time form horses to follow book for the flat season 2021 will be a fantastic addition and resource for you to have at your disposal. Uh, on then to your fifth, selection this is before we move on to i think five more you just want to touch on that aren't the headline picks and trained by aiden o'brien four from five here and this time it is uh salamarak uh who we've seen twice this season so already had two spins once at dundalk one at leopardstown winning both of them and somebody that you want to get on side with this season yeah he's my dark horse for the derby um I've actually already backed him um, at 25 to 1. I think he'll go to Chester. I think he'll win his Chester trial and then it'll be straight forward to the Derby. Um, I really loved his run the last time when, it, when he won at Leopardsdale. I wasn't really uh, sold in him or again a believer of him off the back of just a slowly run Dundalk maiden. He mm. uh, was one of the slowest maidens I've got in recent times. They, they would crawl that day and he made heavy weather of it, but. Clearly, on his leopard style performance, that's not exactly what he wants. He wants a um, an end to end gallop, and that's what he got at leopard style. They had a good solid pace that day, but his back end sectionals from three out to the line were much better than Bolshoi Ballet, and this is what leads me to believe that he could be a better horse than his stabber companion. Bolshoi Ballet won won the the Bally Sacks, which is a reputable trial, but if you compare him like for like with Salamrock from three out and from six out, where I do them from, Salamrock came out the better horse. Interestingly, he won a handicap in doing so. So you think, what's a handicapper rated 85 going on my shortlist for, for the... Why is he going on the shortlist for the derby? <laughs> well, he's now rated 101, so his days in handicaps are over. I don't, I don't really mind that. I, you know, we saw Jack Hobbs win a handicap at, yeah. at Sandown, you know, over a mile and a quarter before he went on to finish second in the derby, much lamented by myself. So, you know, I'd... I'd, I'd I don't mind. Ratings are just there at, at that moment in time, but it doesn't really mean a great deal. You know, John Gosden will run a, one of his Oaks fillies off a rating of 80, you know, and it, it's, it's just where they're at at that moment in time, isn't it? They, yeah. they, obviously, they, they hugely improve. And Sir Amarok, I think he's going to go through the improvement sc uh, scale quite readily. Um, and I think a really strong run mile and a half is going to be right up this, this, um, this lad's alley. And I like his mental attitude as well. He had come from a long, long way back that day at Leopardstown. He had no right to win. It was a, it's a track where you need to be up with the speed. But the further he went, the better he looked. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite keen on him. I, th I think he's going to be, again, another one of these horses that probably won't get the attention of others. But um, make no mistake, this, this horse is high class and he'll, he'll become um, high class in a very short space of time. Salamarak, uh, their 33 to 1 best price with William Hill for the Derby as it stands, 25 to 1, as Andy says, elsewhere. Would you be hoping, you know, given, as you say, you know, um, ran off 85 last time, now rated 101, um, but maybe not the sexiest profile despite the connections? Would you be hoping for a decent price for that uh, Chester trial? Hopefully, yeah. Um, as I said, he, he's very much going to fly under the radar because of what you've just said. He won a handicap. People will think, oh, he's only won a handicap. You know, is, is that any good? But my numbers suggest that he is definitely group, group class. Mm. I'm hoping group one, but if not, you know, he, there's plenty of races to be won with him through the course of the season. But there's no reason to think why he won't um, go down the derby route. I think he'll win his derby trial. I can say whether it would be at Lingfield and follow the Anthony, and, and Anthony Van Dyke route or whether he goes to Chester and follows um, a similar path to quite a few of Aidens who, who went down the Chester um, route. There's t I think there's two derby trials there, isn't there? Mm. Um, I think it's the, is it the D stakes and uh, it's not is it the Chester I think Chester Vars might be for I can't be it, there's definitely two races it might be the Chester Vars there's definitely two races for three year olds anyway um, he'll be in either one of those two or say the Lingfield race sooner or than later so look out for an entry there and um, he's probably one to back now at the 33 to 1 if you can get it Exactly, 33 20 if you can get it for the Derby. A big price fancy there for Andy uh, Salamarak. We've got five more horses. We're just going to rattle through quickly. Uh, these 
didn't quite make the list, but they're, they're horses that you want to touch on. And the first for John and Thady Gosden is Trawler Man. Um, this is going to date quite quickly because, as I said, it's the 19th of April. Mm-hmm. Looks set to have a run um, on Friday at Sandown, entered in for the Classic Trial, although uh, no jockey booking as of yet, so we're not entirely sure, but made some impression, Andy, with an eight-and-a-half-length victory at Ponty uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it was, a, it was a day I was I was on duty um, I, I, for Hills Radio, and I, I sort of did the sectional times and the times very very quickly, and compared him to um, the six furlong sprint handicappers on the card, um, mm. and he came out with the fastest split time from three out from two out straight away. I was thinking, whoa, that was that was incredible, um, yeah. and I went back and done the the overall time, um, and that was just as good. Uh, it came out really well furlong per furlong from start to finish. So he's run a fast overall time, and then he's had that touch of quality at the at the back end to quicken away off his own strong pace and 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 um you know floor two or three nice opponents again he's not quite there yet you know he's he's only won a, a maiden or a novice race uh, but he improved significantly on his first two runs on the all weather the grass seemed to be his bag he's now going to go to sandown whether he runs in the derby trial um, the bonified derby trial on that card or the handicap of the seam in the mile and a quarter handicap the same rate that Jack Hobbs uh, ran in <laughs> incidentally uh, so that could be um, um, a very much a, a coincidence there he's running off 92 or 93 I think in that handicap so he'd be a good thing in the handicap um, so a lot depends what, what Devious John's up to whether, whether he, he wants to land a touch <laughs> in the handicap with a good thing or whether he uh, he decides to bite the bullet and go straight into the derby trial but either way I do think this horse is going to be um, a contender, let's say, for the Derby after the weekend, uh, after Friday. I'd be surprised if he gets beat at Sandown. Uh, it'll take a good one to beat him. And if he fails, I think he's always got the backdrop of perhaps being a um, King George horse at, um, um, sorry, King Edward V, uh, King Edward the fifth, fifth or six, six horse at, uh, at Ascot, which is a, a group two for the three year olds. It's the Ascot Derby, as they call it. So John will work his, you know, his pecking order out between now and then. I can say he's got Uncle Brian. I think that runs in the Derby trial. Um, maybe maybe tomorrow at the Epsom or later on in the week. He's got several that he he could. He's even got Mithras, of course. We haven't yeah. talked about him who won a seven furlong handicap. But that horse is crying out for a mile and a quarter. I don't know what he's doing over seven furlongs. A hell of a turn of foot, wasn't it, last week? In that, in that oh, last... yeah, he got him right out, Joe. Because I can mm. say he's only in the in the shadows of the post that he got up. But he, he's definitely a... Um, one for the French Derby, or, or you know, a mile and a quarter race further down the line. So John's shuffling his pack together nicely as we speak. Uh, but Trawler Man, I think, could end up being one of the best, if not the best, of his mile and a half horses. Trawler Man, thirty-three to one, pretty much across the board for the Derby at the moment. If you wanted to have a chance, your arm ahead of the weekend and keep an eye out. I think seven to one for the uh, for the Classic Trial as it stands at the moment. No prices, of course, yet for the handicap. Um, on then to Alcohol Free for Andrew Balding, uh, Al- Alcohol Free winning uh, yesterday uh, at Newbury as well, just by a uh, short head beating statement, went off nine to four there, uh, first run over seven furlongs and retains an entry for the 1,000 guineas where she is 10 to one best price. Yeah, now this one's uh, going to cause a little bit of a bone of contention with one or two of the, of the viewers, uh, no doubt. Um, <laughs> I think this horse is a Commonwealth Cup horse. Um, I'm hoping that she runs in the guineas and, and runs badly and they drop her back in trip. Interesting. Because to my eyes anyway, she's all raw speed. Now, okay, she stayed the seven furlongs well enough the other day and she, she might have needed the run at Newbury, which made her look a little bit huffy and puffy in the latter stages where she only just fell over the line and won. Mm. Um, I think our class got her through, but I think ultimately she's a sprinter for me. I think she could, could be one of these horses that um, puts the connections in, into a full sense of security when they 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 want to desperately as a um, you know to, for it to stay a stay a mile for breeding prospects and all that kind of stuff. It becomes a self fulfilling prophecy, doesn't it? With a lot yeah, of these yeah. these horses, they 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 try and convince themselves that they've got a, when they've got a guineas horse when probably they haven't, and it's only when they run in the guineas they realise the mistake they've made. I think the Hannans have actually done that quite a few times. They've run the wrong horses in that race and they just haven't got home. Um, I don't think it's a great race for the, ha- for, sorry, for, for Baldings, uh, Andrew Balding course trains this. I don't think it's a great race for the Baldings in, in, um, in looking back in, in you know, through, through the, the yeah. career history of the race. 
Uh, but I think this horse is going to end up being a Commonwealth Cup horse. You know, a victory uh, last year at Newmarket in the Chevy Park suggested she was going to be a high-class sprinter. Uh, she beat all the best horses over that distance last year. And that's where I think she'll end up. So, um, so what one to watch and hopefully... One to watch when she goes back in trip, not necessarily <laughs> for the guineas. Yeah, of course. I mean, she raced quite keenly yesterday as well, um, which, you know, over over seven, as you mentioned, just falling over the line late on um, might have taken a fair bit out of her. But we'll see what happens. And, and hopefully, Andy, if you are right and it doesn't go to plan in the 1000 guineas, then uh, she'll be step put back and trip and we'll have some fun with her later on in the season. Um, we've spoken about a fair few of Aidens, but we've got one for Joseph now, Joseph O'Brien for Thundering Knights, who we saw at the Curra over the weekend, beaten half a length by Broom over a mile and two. We can have some fun with her as well, with with him. So we well, know with her. I was right the first oh, you're time. You're right. You're absolutely right, right with her. Uh, yeah. yeah, I thought I thought this was an excellent run by by Thundering Knight. She she was a filly I put up on my column a few times last season. Um, managed to get on the right side of her. I just love her. I think she's fantastic. I, the Curry is definitely her track. You're going back and look at most of her best runs in her career. That they've all come at the County Kildare track. And once again, she excelled. She was up against Broom. I thought that was a the biggest certainty of the weekend. I got Broom running a massive figure at, at Navan on its debut uh, seasonal reappearance. Sorry, I beg your pardon, Nace on its mm. seasonal reappearance. Um, and Thundering Nights made Broom pull out all the stops. Broom literally only just got up in the shadows of the post. He ended up winning by a half a length in the end, but it was hard fought. I think Broom's going to be right up there with the very top class horses throughout the season. Um, and and like I said, Thundering Nights for its first run of the year, that was an unbelievably good return. Went through the race like a good filly. Went through the race like she retained all her ability from last season. And she got beat by a horse who ran 33 and changed for the last three furlongs by a million miles, the, the quickest horse on the card. Uh, she herself would have beaten the sprinters as well from that point. She she finished miles ahead of like horses like Wordsworth on the round track. Um, and, and even the thing of Aidan O'Brien's that won early on in that day, Lancaster House. So... Everything about that bit of work on on Saturday suggests that she's going to have a fantastic season. She'll probably be keeping in her kept in her own lane against the the, the, the mares and the fillies. But there's plenty of races over in Ireland and over here for her to run in. She's probably best at a mile and a quarter. She didn't get the mile and a half on soft ground towards the back end of the season. At Ascot, so I think that project told them that what they've got. Um, but she's going to be fighting out lots of lots of top class races against her own sex. Uh, and of course, Jose Overruns has begun the season fantastically well. So, mate, continue with this filly. Good stuff. Two more to get through. Uh, next, it is the favourites uh, in most places for the 2000 Guineas. Now, a lot of money coming in for one ruler over the past week or so. Must have done a sparkling piece of work or something. Uh, Andy, maybe you can fill us in. But one ruler seen last time at Doncaster, beaten by Max Sweeney, winning two of his five starts uh, last year. Yeah, he got beat in the old Racing Post trophy, didn't he, towards the back end? But it very much the ground that did him for me. He played mm. with the strengths of Max Winnie. Didn't suit this fella. Look, whether he can beat the A. No. Brian Battalions at at, um, at Newmarket, I don't know. But he has been working great. But it was his run at Doncaster when he got beat um, uh, in, a, in a, I think it was a listed race by New Mandate. By New which, Mandate, yeah. Yeah, which suggested to me that he was going to be top class this season. That time figure was really good. Uh, New Mandate won next time out at Newmarket that he didn't really... Thing, things didn't go right for him in the Breeders' Cup. Uh, but I still think that form's top class. Uh, again, one ruler with him. I, I don't know whether he's a mile or a seven furlong or Tony time will tell, but there's plenty of races for him. If he doesn't work out in the Guineas, he's got races, maybe like the Coronation Cup or even the Jersey Stakes, dropping back in trip. Um, I, like I say, I see him in between. I don't see him as a mile and a quarter horse further beyond. I see him as a seven furlong miler. Uh, and again, he's going to be running in all the best career ones this season. Yeah, one ruler currently is five to one best price with Bet365 for the 2000 Guineas, as I say, current favourite. But just before we move on to the last one, Andy, you're going to put you on the spot. Who goes off favourite for the 2000 Guineas? You've got one ruler five to one, St Mark's Basilica six to one, Wembley seven to one, Thunder Moon seven to one, as it stands. Um, Who's SB well, Fav? Probably one ruler. One ruler, there you go. Yeah. Five, five to one, as it is at the moment. The last one, Random Harvests uh, for Ed Walker who won on debut at 33 to one, suggesting maybe connections were a little bit surprised. Lady Bamford owned uh, Philly um, and we haven't seen her since, Andy. No, it could be a really good year for Ed Walk. He's already started up uh, really well, uh, winning with um, a lot of sprinters, actually. He's doing well, really well with his six, seven furlong horses. Um, 
But yeah, I, th- I think there's lots lots to come from this filly. I certainly hope so. Anyway, she just had the one, as you said, at Yarmouth on soft ground towards the back end. But just love the way she she got the job done. Time figure was very good. The sectionals were very good. She quickened up really well. She's entered up in the 1,000 guineas. Whether she's good enough for that, I don't know. But um, the fact that she's even entered up in that suggests to me anyway that Ed thinks of her in that kind of level. Um, Surprised we haven't seen her in a trial yet. So maybe she's probably just taken a little while to come to hand or maybe they're waiting for a little bit of ease in the ground. I don't know. Mm. Uh, But again, I I think she's one for the listeners, um, for the viewers of this, to keep on side. Um, I don't think she's going to be quite group one. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe she, she might end up being that good. But... I think you'll get a bit of fun out of her. She, she's the, the the dark horse of, of of all the ones I've talked about. I, I thought I'd throw one in from complete left field that not too many of the viewers would have uh, or, or paid it too much attention to. <laughs> 66 to 1 she is for the 1,000 guineas, but as we say, not sure if she will go there. And she makes up your ones, well, your, your, your shortlisters rather than your ones to follow. So, Andy, your five to follow are high definition. Willow, Snow Lantern, Wembley and Slamarock. The five you've given a favourable moment favourable mentions to Chawler Man, Alcohol Free, Thundering Heights, One Ruler and Random Harvest, but Alcohol Free back uh, when when down and chip again after maybe a, uh, a, a below par run in the Thousand Guineas. But uh, thanks very much for joining us today. Andy, always great to get your insight. Please do download the Odds Checker app now if you like what you've heard from Andy and you want his tips every single morning straight to the app on the day's racing. Also the best prices, best bookie offers, free bets and a host of other things on the app. So do download it. Do enter the competition to get the time for more horses to follow 2021 flat season by commenting on the video below. Do subscribe to the podcast for loads more previews coming up ahead of the whole flat season, ahead of all other sports as well, or subscribe to the Odds Checker YouTube channel. Hopefully, we flagged up a couple of future winners over the course of the season, and please do gamble responsibly.